three years. And nowadays, I am working for Aberdeen Cloud, a virtual cluster, uh, clustering platform for Big Drupal. Ethan is technical director at Ecodicto, and he will talk after me. Uh, my part is about 25 minutes. So, thank you. So, why I'm here talking to you uh, about JavaScript and Backbone.js? Because Backbone.js fits into Drupal future. Uh, the big picture is this. In the back end, uh, Drupal 8 will support natively RESTful calls, and the uh, front end, Backbone.js, will be consuming that JSON data and rendering the HTML. This is the big picture I want that you have during the session. But before we start to get into details, let's start with the demo, yeah? <laughs> Why to wait? Uh, I was thinking to demo first a simple uh, to-do app, but uh, why not to show a full complex web application that you can see uh, something real. I'm going to demo you the Aberdeen Cloud web interface. We made the decision of building the interface with Backbone.js and we don't regret it. It enforces you to follow healthy design patterns, and our code has become much easier to maintain. As you see now, all these interactions, uh, the back end is not rendering any HTML. Everything is happening in the front end. Backbone is taking care of the, of the user interface. That means that the interface is much more snappier. Um, this translates into a better user experience for the end user. Uh, forget about refreshing the whole page. That's the point. If Pipeborn has worked for us, I'm sure that it can help you too for your next web application. But now let's see how we have arrived to this point after a decade of web evolution. Uh, 2000, who remembers how it was to build websites in 2000? Uh, <laughs> some HTML, some CSS. If, if JavaScript was used in that time, probably it was for some alerts and pop-ups. So I, it's normal that JavaScript got bad reputation from, from those days. But let's jump to 2006. By that time, uh, Google released Gmail. And I think most of the people start to look JavaScript with different eyes. It was like, wow, you can do that with JavaScript? So, but still most of the people that is not Google was uh, using JavaScript for uh, small stuff, maybe Ajax. Uh, in 2006, six also, uh, jQuery 1.0 was released. But that's 2006. Now we are in 2012. Today, many developers are using JavaScript for important tasks. It's not anymore about a couple of uh, JavaScript snippets. Uh, uh, the front end is sharing the heavy lifting also with the back end. Uh, today it's normal to build websites with dozens of JavaScript files, uh, <coughs> third party libraries. It's becoming normal to have teams of people only dedicated for front end. So, do you recognize this slogan? Who's the slogan is? Java. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Java's slogan. As you know, Java has nothing to do with JavaScript. Uh, they say Java is to JavaScript as ham is to hamster. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
but although they are totally different, in a way JavaScript is becoming the run everywhere language that Java wanted to be. If you think about it, uh, JavaScript, there is JavaScript interpreters everywhere. It's the only language uh, that is shared across all main browsers. It's in almost every operative system. It's in your mobile phone, it's in your tablet, it's even soon in your TV. So it's huge benefits to program in JavaScript your web interfaces. So JavaScript is here to stay for some time. Uh, who, who here programs in JavaScript? Okay, more than half of the people. Who likes to program in JavaScript? Okay, a little less. <laughs> who hates JavaScript? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You are in the wrong session. <laughs> this is a screenshot that shows the top languages hosted on GitHub. Uh, the number one, JavaScript. But JavaScript is gro growing in other ways too. This graph represents the last two years uh, of evolution among the top one million sites of Alexa ranking. As you can see, the average JavaScript size has in increased a lot. So this is further proof that we are not using anymore for JavaScript for small things. We are JavaScript is not anymore. It's no longer child's play. We keep adding more and more logic to our front end. I don't know, if we keep doing this and growing and growing uh, without applying design patterns, do you know how it's going to end up? <laughs> if, if we are going to, ta uh, to take JavaScript uh, seriously, uh, we need to organize this mess and apply some structure. Uh, some people say, uh, hey, PHP makes spaghetti code. That's nothing compared with JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> Asynchronous callbacks that triggers other callbacks that trigger other, co you know, this callback hell. Y you know what, what I'm talking if you have been there. So we want the end of spaghetti code. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lasagna code. <laughs> now, I, I mean it in a positive way. This <laughs> <laughs> we want JavaScript in layers, uh, in modules, uh, encapsulated code, decoupled code, uh, you know, all those best practices that you already know, but we haven't think to apply them to JavaScript. So here is where Backbone enters. Backbone gives a structure to web applications by providing models, collection, and views, connecting all to your existing API over a RESTful JSON interface. The author of Backbone is Jeremy Askenas. He is also author of Underscore JS and CoffeeScript. I'm sure you have heard. Backbone depends on Underscore JS and jQuery. Hey, jQuery, I know jQuery, that's in Drupal core, true, that's, well, we, we are using already uh, one framework, why to use o another one? Well, they're not the same. Please pay attention now, these are important concepts. So, when people talk about JavaScript, in general, it's a mix of these concepts. jQuery covers this area, the DOM, DOM events, and also makes really easy to make uh, Ajax calls. So jQuery is making a great work uh, covering that area and abstracting the DOM API across all main browsers. But here's the secret. The less that you, that you touch the DOM, the better. The DOM is the big bottleneck nowadays in the front end. Uh, almost all these improvements that you have heard lately about JavaScript getting faster and faster in the browser, and almost everything 
about those improvements are in the ECMAScript interpreter, the pure JavaScript language. So Backbone is a library that decouples the pure data from the DOM. So it helps you to keep the, your data in the fast track, in the red areas. And only when it's necessary, it will touch the DOM. Remember the red and blue colors? So here is the a basic explanation of Backbone. A model is just a simple JavaScript object. And a view takes care of uh, linking a HTML element, holding a HTML. So imagine this, the, uh, a model asks to the server, hey, uh, I need some data, the REST API answers, and when the model has received this data is when it triggers, hey, I've changed. So it's the view who is listening to these events, the one who takes care of updating the, the HTML. You never touch the DOM directly. It's you left that work to backbone. So if there is something that you should remember from this session is this. The update of the DOM is a consequence of a change in the model. Uh, all right, and what about other frameworks? Jeremy uh, released Backbone about two years ago. Uh, since then has popped out many other frameworks. Uh, uh, adopting some ideas of Backbone. And I encourage you to download them, review them, uh, check the small differences between Backbone and but I will share with you my opinion why, why Backbone is better. For me, it's be one of the main reasons, reasons is that it was the first. So, and today still is the more popular frame, uh, JavaScript MVC framework. What does it mean that uh, there is more blog posts, there is more tutorials, there is more stack overflow questions? Uh, yeah, I know that you. <coughs> So we are in a sweet spot uh, for developers. It has, uh, it's nice now to start developing in Backbone. And other benefit is that it's small and flexible, so you can adapt it to your needs. It has only 800 lines of code. The other frameworks, okay, let's say that the problem here is that when you are starting to do uh, programming this way uh, and apply the same patterns to JavaScript, uh, it's something relatively new. So you need at the beginning a lot of help to try to figure out, okay, how this works. So I think Backbone answers better that question. So why Backbone is going to continue leading for more years, I think so, is because of its philosophy. Jeremy is not is a veteran in JavaScript. He knows how to build libraries. And Backbone focus on only one thing and doing that thing very well. When it's small, it's easy to adapt also to whatever lamp, is, uh, whatever Backbone, uh, sorry, so many names, backend. And you can easy, easily adapt it also to the Drupal lamp stack. So the author is very concerned about not bloating the library. He has the, the rule that if a change, a new feature, uh, it will be only added to Backbone if it helps to 80% or more of Backbone users. And finally, if you don't like something of Backbone, just override it. There is no problem, there is no don't hack backbone. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear what I said before? 800 lines of code. Uh, you can compare that with jQuery. jQuery has 6,000 lines of code. So it's quite small. That's good uh, and bad. Bad because here's the truth. Uh, backbone is not going to do much coding for you. It only provides you some minimalistic tools to 
build your application in a modular way, but it's only the skeleton. You need to understand how Backbone works uh, if you want to expand it and grow a complex web application. That's why I talk a lot about JavaScript during this part, uh, because if you're building a Backbone application, you need to know about JavaScript, JavaScript arrays, objects, closures, prototypes, scopes, all that stuff. So if you want really to take the full power of Backbone. But any, don't worry, don't be worried. I'm, I'm coming myself from a PHP Drupal background. And if I could learn it, I'm sure you can do it too. Take it as a chance to learn JavaScript. Some tips for, at the beginning. Don't complicate your life. If you are going to make only a couple of Ajax, Ajax calls, uh, you don't need backbone. Uh, remember when I said uh, JavaScript is everywhere? Well, it was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> one, one place where it has not arrived or is still is arriving is to Google bots. So if for you it's important that your web application is fetched by Google, then don't render your content in JavaScript. Backbone way takes time to learn. It's not something fast. So yeah. I will reserve a couple of weeks to fully understand it. Uh, anyway, you know, we are Drupal developers. Uh, we are used to a steep learning curve. So <laughs> don't use compilers like CoffeeScript until you master JavaScript. In the same way, there are some add-ons that you can put on top of Backbone, but I, I wouldn't recommend it at the beginning because probably you don't need them and they will bloat up your application. Once that you learn Backbone, maybe you can do it yourself or use other add-ons, but don't try to hide your lack of knowledge using add-ons. And finally, don't waste time trying to learn it by theory. It's a model view, whatever. It's the best advice I can give you is that if you want to learn Backbone, then read the source code, those 800 lines of code, and you will grasp it. I understand that it can create some tension between back end and front end. Uh, developers, or if you are working in both ends, it can create a conflict inside you. Should I put the, <laughs> should I put now the JavaScript hat or the PHP hat developer? Uh, but when, when you choose one hat, then do it in the language. Uh, what I mean is that uh, in Drupal 6 core, we started to program JavaScript from PHP. Uh, if you have work with aha properties, you know, but they were a pain. Yeah? This is called metaprogramming. Uh, we are doubling the complexity of our code when we do things like this. In Drupal 7, we add more metaprogramming. Uh, these kind of things are done with the best intentions and it's suitable for really simple stuff and not <coughs> obtrusive behavior. Uh, we are in 2012, and this little sandbox is not enough. So that was my little rant, so <laughs> I have to get it up. Uh, don't do more metaprogramming. I will like to finish my slides uh, with the idea of embrace JavaScript, and when you put your hat of JavaScript developer, do it in, with JavaScript language. Uh, don't feel bad about, oh, no, I'm not doing it in the Drupal way because Drupal way is also changing. Thanks to Larry and his whiskey initiative, uh, we will have Drupal 8 exposing content in a native uh, restful JSON way. So, and still PHP and Drupal are very important in this paradigm. Uh, still we need authentication, authentication, storing the actual content, validation, permissions, emailing, uh, Backbone is only liberating the servers from some pure client tasks. 
Uh, I will tweet later a, a extended version of my slides with some extra resources. But now let's listen to Ethan coming from United States to share with us uh, his work on Backbone module and how to make web apps with Drupal now, not in Drupal 8. Thank you. I don't have so many funny pictures, sorry. Um, so a few things as we get started. Let me switch my video. There we go. Um, first off, can everybody hear me okay? Okay. Is it too loud? Okay. Um, so a few things. One is just about the presentation, a note that um, I'm having some issues with some of the video demos, so I may have to just do it live, as we say. Um, and um, you know, I'll, I'll be covering some of the same things as David, but a lot from a little bit of a different perspective. So there's going to be a lot more code um, in this section. So this is how to use the Drupal Backbone module. Um, I'm one of the creators and maintainers of the module. Um, Cormac McGuire is another, and uh, this is Chromac. Um, and we've had a few great contributors as well. Um, subtitle for this would be uh, a deep dive into the shallow side of the pool. You know, I'm not going to be able to get into now every single thing about how to make like the amazing Backbone app that David showed. Um, there's a, you can do a tremendous amount with Backbone. Um, but my goal really is to give you enough coming out of here that you'll have an idea of the kind of code that is required to use the Drupal Backbone module, how to build back basic Backbone apps with Drupal and the, and the module and um, how those simple parts combine to make really complex, interactive, uh, just stunning user interfaces. Um, the, the, the goal of the module is basically to provide some, some of the solutions and fixes that others who have used Backbone with Drupal have had to come up with. You know, there's just ways that you have to work with, with the different Drupal RESTful backends. Um, and you know, why have everyone reinventing the wheel, right? So the, the module basically makes it easier to get started. Uh, and then it also supplies some best, best practices and some standard patterns for using Backbone. Um, so some things in a little bit in a way that aren't quite so Backbone philosophical, um, where it, it does a little more for you than Backbone does. It makes a few more assumptions. And you can take those or leave those, but the idea is that it should get, it make it easier for you to get started building a, a Backbone application pretty quickly. Um, yeah, as we talked about, Backbone is great because it's super small and elegant. I would say not just the best way to learn how to use Backbone is to read the Backbone source. I think the best way to learn how to write good JavaScript is to read the Backbone source. It's some of the best JavaScript you'll, you'll see. Um, and it's also built to be extensible. And that's really one of the things that the module capitalizes on, um, is extending the base Backbone models and views uh, to fit the Drupal application. And it's also really, really fun. Um, I actually first, the first project I worked on was just, I wanted to have more fun, so I used Backbone. Um, and it worked. Um, so let's go. So start with a simple demo. Let's see if the video works. So David didn't do a to-do, so I will. This is uh, made by Stein Setfic. It's a port of the to-do app for Backbone to Drupal. So instead of using, I think the original uses like a SQLite or maybe doesn't even have a backend, this actually is creating Drupal nodes and everything on the backend as these forms get submitted. So if we, if we can find our way to the input. Well, first, let's see. Yeah, we'll, so that's just unpublishing that node or marking it complete. Um, we can create a new node just by entering it here. As soon as we hit enter, it's going to get attached to the bottom of the list. In the background there, as David pointed out, it's all asynchronous. So the, the UI updated automatically. In the back end, it fired off a, a request to the server, created the node, but didn't wait for that to complete. So the user experience is really seamless. There's no kind of Ajax or AHA you know, lurch. Um, and then we just kind of refresh the page, and now we can see that all of that is persistent because it's all in the Drupal backend. So everything that we, we marked complete is there. 
we get the awesome kind of fun Drupal update messages just because it, it proves that I'm not just lying. Um, and that's you know, me trying to make a, a Munich joke. Um, so it's a really simple example, but it shows the power. You know, that, that's a node authoring interface. That's, that's, that's node add um, dressed up in a to-do application. Um, and that's all using the Drupal backbone module. And it's really, it's, I think it's like 40 or 50 lines of code. It's pretty short. Um, so as we talked about the enemy, so we, so we saw the enemy dressed up as a smiley kid with spaghetti and it was really cute. Let's look at the enemy's real face this time. That's what the enemy really looks like, right? Um, so this is, this is a great um, slide that I took out of a presentation by, by Justin Searles. Um, it's confidence.js. It's about testing with Jasmine and lots of really great stuff on how to test. Um, but this basically outlines a kind of standard. We have this kind of stuff all over Drupal, right? You know, just fire off a request. When it comes back, do something. Oh yeah, maybe you know, theme it this way. And sure, we have we we, we can kind of abstract the theming a little bit, um, but there's not a whole lot we can do to really clean this up. And the basic question I would pose is: You wouldn't write server side code like this. You wouldn't write serious. You know, this is not the way that we would write code that we thought was important and real and serious. So so why are we writing JavaScript code like this, right? Um, and this is the exact problem that Backbone is meant to solve. So Backbone can help. And it helps by just, let's break it down into three parts. I had a picture of a cute cat there, but it was um, not, not um, Creative Commons license. Um, so you can break it down into requesting, getting stuff, communicating with the server. That's the, the Ajax layer that, that was in the little, that, that awesome architecture diagram. Um, we have rendering, which is just actually putting that stuff into HTML and responding, actually processing user interactions to make stuff happen. So let's start with requesting. With Backbone, creating a node is as simple as those top two lines. Uh, or actually, sorry, loading a node is as simple as those top two lines. Uh, we just create a new node model. Um, that Backbone models node, that's provided by the Drupal Backbone module. So it already has the interface to the, to, to the node REST backend set up for you. It's all set to process the data it gets back. So all you have to do is create. Oh, this is actually a mistake. It should say new. There should be a new Drupal Backbone models node there. Um, and then we just fetch it. So we create it, we, we, we specify the ID, and fetch it from the server, um, I think. There we go, that's right. Um, JavaScript is really cool. <laughs> so, and then once we have that object, we can do all these cool things. We can use get to access different properties. So we can get fields on it, we can get the title, we can get the body, we can you know, get collections, multiple nodes, all this stuff. We can set new properties, so we can set a title to something new, um, and then we could, you know, output the actual attributes property of that model, and we'd see a whole bunch of stuff, all very familiar. You know, kind of same thing as if you were to DPM a node on the server, only it's going to be in JSON because that's where we are now. Um, but we have this full node object to work with in a, in a JavaScript application framework. Creating a node is basically just as simple. Um, here we're going to create a very simple node. This is actually a little bit oversimplified because the body needs to be a little more complex right now, but we're working on that. Um, but we're going to tell it, say what type it is, give it a title, give it a body, and then just save it. And again, the uh, backbone node model prototype just does it all for you. It knows how to talk to the server. It knows how to process the attributes. Boom. And you can do the same thing with users or comments or flags or anything else. In this case, the current most um, mature backend that's supported by the Drupal Backbone module is the service services and services REST implementation. Um, but uh, there's a REST for web services one in, in the works. And content API is definitely on the list. So the goal is to support all of the different current REST backends and be interchangeable between them. And it's, it's set up to be to, for that kind of architecture. Um, so this is a quick, you know, this is basically a different version of, of the different the, the flow that David showed. But um, it's a little hard to read from this perspective, but hopefully it'll do, but this is basically what, what happens when you save is the, the, the individual model that you're working with, you save that, that runs a to JSON model to actually take that, the attributes and encode them in the way that Drupal's expecting. That passes it to the, bit, to the backbone sync method. So backbone has this kind of global sync 
which can be overridden. You can have a, a sync method just for a specific model. Um, you, have, you have a real flexibility there in how Backbone com communicates to the server, and we'll see the power of that in a second. Um, but then the Backbone sync is responsible for basically sending, sending the JSON to the server, waiting for it and firing off the callback when it gets back. Um, and then that gets, that when, when it comes back, the server sends back any updated fields. And so anything that comes back from the server, so for instance, if it's a new node, now you'll have an NID. And so the NID is going to come back through this way and update the model. Um, and when that model gets updated, it's going to fire an event saying, hey, I've changed. And that's really powerful because it's those events firing that let us decouple. So we don't have to listen to that specific model anymore. All we have to do is bind to that chain's event. Um, and that's how we get this real power and much more maintainable, delicious lasagna code. Loading looks very similar. Um, these will all be online too, so if you want to kind of study them in more depth. Um, but you're basically doing the same thing. It's passing through the, the, you know, if you want to have a very specific model, you can have that, and that, you know, that will delegate to the, the backbone default um, nodes fetch implementation. That will queue the request with backbone sync which will send the request for the node data to the server. It will wait for it to respond and do its thing. Um, one, one thing here to note is this little finish with custom parsing. Um, so Backbone runs a parse routine on the data it gets back from the server, and we can override that in various ways. Um, and um, currently, we just basically pass the whole thing into the model. Um, but the plan there is to actually have a really extensible parsing system that will actually parse individual fields, field types, or a generic parser as you want. So we can ultimately actually automatically parse based on a content type definition uh, into a native JavaScript object. So I mentioned the power of Backbone Sync. The cool thing about Backbone Sync is you can point anywhere. So you can point and you can have in the same Backbone app, you can have multiple sync methods. One could point to your Drupal REST backend. One could point, say, or maybe receive information from a WebSockets backend. Um, and another could point to a RESTful CRM API, like a Salesforce or something like that. Um, so you can do, or any other system. So you can have what I like, to, what, what, what I kind of promiscuous client-side applications where instead of having to write these middleware layers in our Drupal program, these modules that take in information and cache them for a certain amount of time, and maybe they hold them, maybe they don't, they don't know what to do. Now we can just actually let the client take care of that. Drupal sends the, the content it's responsible for. The client loads content from other places as it's needed. Um, this is actually the application that we've used Backbone for most in our projects. Um, so just to show a demo here, um, this is an example of Backbone, the, the Backbone module in the wild. Um, this is a fairly minimal implementation. It's just pulling in information from a non-Drupal backend into a Backbone, I mean, sorry, into a Drupal page. Um, but the plans here are to actually extend that into load related information from Drupal nodes, even though the main content is actually from archive.org. So here we'll see if, uh, and here I'm getting my video issues. So. So the, exact, so the basic example here, and I'm not able to do good Yiddish, is we can send, this is, this is going to be searching from, um, from archive.org's uh, non-RESTful interface. So this is actually using JSONP. Click search. It's going out. It's getting the information. Um, it's actually making two calls. To, 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 you know, so it's a very custom API implementation all in Backbone. Um, and it looks like native, you know, the user never knows that they've actually talked to two different systems, that they're on a Drupal page, and they're look, looking at archive.org. Um, the experience, frankly, is, 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 you know, we used to be much better than like an iframe or something like that, you know, and, and the, you know, there's no caching issues, no latency issues that you would have if you were to go with a PHP solution. So for this solution, even, you know, even though it's fairly simple, I think Backbone is the right choice. Uh, it's really great for kind of middleware on the client side. So with that, I just want to thank my company, Echo Ditto, for supporting the module development. That was an Echo Ditto project. It supported a lot of Drupal 6 backport. Um, Drupal 7 is definitely where mo most of the action is at. Um, but this is, uh, it's been really fun and great to have their support working on this. So two, rendering. Cool thing about Backbone is now you're rendering on the client side. You're not rendering on the server anymore. So what you're doing is actually passing Twig, Twig JS templates like this, or you can use handlebars or underscore are the three supported template libraries by the Backbone module. Um, probably the only other one I think that's common, well, there's, there's a few others. There's Mustache and, um, and Dart, I think. But um, 
I'm using Twig because there's a Twig session going on in the other room right now, and Twig is Drupal 8. Twig is in Drupal's future. And um, I'm also supposed to announce that tomorrow, if you're interested in the kind of future of the front end, there's going to be the core conversation that was rescheduled um, on the new theme layer, which will have Twig as a key part. Um, so it's kind of neat that we can have client templates and server-side templates in the same language if we're using Twig on the back end. Um, but the cool thing is that Twig.js is an open source project that can render the Twig format used by Symfony on the client side. So we have a very simple, um, a very simple template here for our, for, our, for our node. Just basically render the title and the body. Um, the view is fairly simple too. So this is, this is now a backbone view. Someone told me I should try calling them view, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, so the backbone view is not the same as a Drupal view. Um, it's, it's, more like, you know, it's, it's, a back, it's more like a template or a template function or a theme function. Um, and basically, we just pass it a selector. So our templates are stored in the DOM. They're stored inside script tags with IDs. Um, and we basically say, look here for this template. Use the twig renderer or the underscore renderer or the handlebars render, but here we're going to use Twig. And then that's it. That's all we need to create our, our, our view to render a node. We just create a demo, a, de a kind of example node here, and then just create a specific, a specific instance of our view with our model passed in. Um, and then as soon as we render it, it will take care of itself. So this is not the way Backbone works. Backbone render doesn't do anything. Uh, the Drupal Backbone render is pretty robust. Um, it actually takes care of compiling templates for you. It takes care of, of, of attaching the element to the DOM if you want it to. Um, so this is one part where, so you don't have to get deep in the weeds of backbone rendering and backbone architecture. You can get started really quickly with, with uh, backbone and Drupal using this. And wow, pretty impressive, huh? <laughs> That's what you get. Um, so cool things about events though, right? So now we can use this binding and the fact that we have our data and our, and our HTML decoupled and we can automatically update that HTML whenever the module changes. Um, and so in this case, what we're gonna do is this key line right here where we're actually going to bind any changes on the model to the render function of, of the view. Um, so basically what this says is that whenever we go through a whole process sending and receiving and we get information back and the information is different, or whenever someone says this.model.set title something different, whenever, someone change, you know, whenever that model changes in any way, we want to update the HTML, update the DOM so it reflects that change. And now we don't have to worry about what might be changing. We don't have to keep on continuously updating every single time we make a call. It just takes care of itself. Um, and this is like, this is, this is the magic right here. Events and events bubbling up and down, as we'll see, um, let us write really complex code with just like this beautiful architecture. Um, so here, for instance, the title, as soon as we said, you know, set the title to be magic, the title will change to magic. Um, so three, responding. So we've talked about binding to events that are coming on the model, changes on the model. Let's talk about binding to events that are coming from the user. So the backbone views handle user events through an events array or through, through binding those events. Um, to show an example of that, let's add a button to our template. So this is some simple, just as a, Jeremy Ashkenaz would, would like raise his hand right now and tell me this is a really bad template and he's right. Um, templates should never be stateful. They should never have if statements. They should have, this should be in the view function, yes, yes, yes. To keep it simple for the purposes of this talk, we're just gonna put some logic into our template. Um, but that's not, not the proper, proper way. Um, so basically what this is doing here is just a simple promote button. So it basically checks to see if the node is promoted. If it is, it's gonna, have, it's gonna say unpromote. And if it's, if it's not promoted, then, it's gonna do, then the button will let, let, let you promote. So this is a really simple toggle. And now all we have to do is update that simple view. Um, you can see we're using the extend function here, which is the way that Backbone, allows you to extend its base events. And it makes it really extensible. So it's simple parts, always extensible. That's the core of the philosophy. And so now basically we're saying, um, we're using the, the, the jQuery delegate syntax right here to say whenever that promote toggle element is clicked, run the function promote toggle. I think this maybe should be in quotes, but. Um, and promote toggle then is a simple function. Again, this is bad. This should really be on the model, but I'm trying to keep it simple. 
which is basically going to toggle, you know, just in, just just flip the the promoted value between zero and one, um, and then save it. And so now, that's all we need to do to bind bind to bind a you know to listen to an event. And what that gives us is behavior. Unfortunately, this is another one of these ones that's not going to work. And this is a little harder for me to pull up right away. But basically, when we click on the promote button, there we go. It's just going to update automatically because it's it's, all right, it's automatically re-rendering. So there's no special. I'm not listening to those click items. I'm never saying change the HTML. Um, all you know that whole you know all of that action, that whole changing and changing the state of the model, saving the model to the back end, everything. Um, that's all right here in this code. So super simple. And now third part. I mean a fourth part. So we talked about the three things that we need. Backbone offers this other awesome piece called collections. And that's for the really simple, really common use case um, where you want to display lists of nodes or lists of users and, you're, and you want to process those lists um, in bulk somehow or you want to um, you know, iterate over them and do something. So you know, without something like Backbone, it's kind of a chore. It's like go, call a view, render it all, create some objects, maybe some DOM objects for each one, theme it, how are you going to do that? You know, if you do this kind of old school spaghetti JavaScript style, this is going to be really hard. Of course, with Backbone, this is the Backbone logo, by the way. So with Backbone and Drupal, it becomes awesome and really simple. Um, so an example here, first we're going to just, this is a very basic Backbone collection. And Backbone collections marry with views really well, right? So you can load a view, with, which is a list of, of, of items, into a collection, and it will automatically create an individual model for each thing in the view, for each node in the view. So it's really pretty powerful. Um, so here we're, we're creating a, a view collection, so it's a node view collection. The whole view view thing gets really confusing. Um, but so this is, a, this is a view of nodes, and it's a collection that holds a view of nodes. Um, we just tell that collection that each individual item in the collection should be a standard node, nothing special, and that the name of the view, this is just a parameter, we're going to be loading um, is, is DrupalCon unique example view. So that's, that, that's basically all we need to do to set up our collection to load a bunch of, of nodes from a view into JavaScript like that. We just run the fetch method. It's going to go out. It's going to get a huge array of, 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 um, of nodes serialized as JSON. And it's going to create models, uh, models for each one and add them to the collection so they can be dealt with in bulk. Um, so this is, this is really powerful. And then we can do things like retrieve a single one. We can set the title, or we can actually manipulate any one of those individual uh, nodes in that list. Um, and we can also save it. So we can make a bunch of changes and save them all together. And, and, and Backbone will, you can, you can code it to support batch. I think it's the patch verb on REST if you want to. But of course, that's something that, that's something that we have available to us now, unless someone tells me we do. Um, so finally, I'm just going to wrap up here with the last kind of, this is a more complex example. And this is one where. We've tried to provide a standard pattern um, ready to go so that you don't have to go through the process of reinventing it, um, which is the collection view pattern. And this is how you render um, a, a collection of nodes or a collection of, of, mo of models. Um, and this is the kind of thing that Backbone doesn't do for you. It lets you do it yourself, so you have real control. Um, but there's a pretty well-defined standard about how to go about it. Um, so to make this work, we're just going to add one more template to, to our set here. Um, and it's going to be basically just a container with a UL to hold the results of that view. So when, when they come in, all of the models will be rendered into this UL here. We create a view now for that collection. So um, first, we're going to set everything up. So we have our, our basic, the same, the same collection that we had before. Um, we have a very simple view for the node, um, you know, basically the same one as we had before. Um, one note here is that we're, we're just specifying that we actually want to wrap each element in an LI because we're going to go into UL. So we're just basically taking the same template, same renderer, and Backbone has the ability to wrap each element in some, some tag that we specify. So here we're saying LI. Um, and then so this is the second part of the same file. Um, and basically what we're doing here is we're using the collection view uh, uh, prototype object that, um, that, back, that, that, the, that the Drupal backbone module provides. Um, and 
here we're saying the same thing. We're giving it a, we're, we're telling it which collection it should be rendering. We're telling it um, what the template for the view should be. So, so actually what's the, the collection container template going to be? Um, again, which renderer? We're gonna use Twig. Um, we're giving it an L, so we're, we're, we're actually giving it a selector to say, you should attach yourself into the DOM here when you're done. Without that, um, Backbone won't put, it will actually, it will render, but it won't actually attach the element into the DOM until you tell it to. Um, and, we're, we, and then finally, we're gonna give it a view for each item. So we're saying, this is the view that each model in this collection should be rendered with. So since this is gonna be a collection of nodes, we're gonna use this node view right here, we're gonna pass that in. And finally, we're saying that when you render each of those items, you should render them into a search result, in, into the, the ul.search results element. And so that's basically saying you should go here. So there's a lot of arguments here. This is definitely getting to be more of an API if you're familiar with like Ember.js or that kind of stuff, we're going more in that direction of being a little more robust. Um, but if you don't want it, don't have to do it. If this is helpful to you, you can render a collection right now with no additional code using this, this, this prototype object. Um, and then all you have to do is render it. Um, one of the really cool things is we render it, but we have to actually fetch the collection yet. So what's it gonna render? At first it's gonna be empty. Um, and then when, as soon as we run that fetch, the fetch is gonna go out to the server it's gonna get that huge serialized array of JSON nodes. It's gonna to start to um, parse each one, create a new model, add that model to the collection, create a new model, add that model to the collection. Every single time a model is added, it triggers an add event. That add event is what the collection view uses to, re to, to, to render a new model into the DOM. And so, you know, there's no code here that needs to listen for individual things being added or removed. You know, it all takes care of itself um, because it's using events. So events are your friend. So another cool thing, this is what, this is what the output's gonna be. This is the same node template as we had before. We've reused it. Now we're just rendering it into a really nice container. Finally, what's really cool is we can actually use that same template and that same node object that we used before that had the interactivity and that will work in our view too. So now we can have a, we can be promoting, unpromoting a view, we can have a search box here, we can do a ton of things. We haven't put any additional code in, we're just building on what we have. Each piece is taking care of its own work um, but we're getting slowly more and more functionality and you can see how this would be really powerful. Um, so this is how you can finally build applications like David's. So Backbone's all about delegation. Um, this is the basic Backbone stack. Oop, not that one, this one here. Um, so you can see basically that we have, in the Backbone side, we have events are bubbling up from, from, from the models up, uh, and they're gonna be, inter in, they're, they're changing the way the, the views are rendering to the DOM. Interactions are, are, are being pushed, are being passed down, so that the views are triggering different model events based on interactions. Um, and we have these basic, you know, we have a basic Drupal architecture on the back end. So that's the basics of the JavaScript side. Really quickly now, we'll talk about how to set up a module. Um, you know, an actual Drupal module that uses the Backbone, the, the, the Backbone module API is pretty simple. Um, all we're gonna need is some page callback, you know, some place that, you know, some path, basically a router. Um, uh, you know, here we have an example of what the callback would look like. So we're gonna include, um, you know, our library. So that here we're gonna use the Drupal, the, the services variant of the Backbone library. We're gonna include the Twig.js rendering library. Um, we use the Backbone add template function to actually attach the, view, the, attach the template code into the DOM. Um, it goes into a script tag and then just puts, it, just puts the code in there. Um, and this is the, th this is how we specify the selector. So that same selector, whenever we say template selector on our views, um, this is, we're using this, this, this string right here. Um, and one note here is that we're using the theme layer to manage all of our, all of our templates. And that's just a convention, but it's a really helpful one. Um, and finally, we're actually adding the JS for our, uh, for our app. Um, and the app is gonna be, you know, standard stuff. Just use behaviors, put on the attach, do some stuff. 
That's all you need to do. Um, and finally, in that same um, callback function, we need to re re just give some root element that our app can attach to. And so here I'm just using a render array. Um, this is an example theme function. Here you can see that we're, you know, yeah, this is how we're specifying the different templates that we're including. Um, you know, and if they're going to be uh, in, in, in external template files, it's pretty convenient that way. Um, and one really cool thing that we get by using the theme layer is we can use the T function, which we don't have in Backbone natively. We could use the Java, there are JavaScript translation libraries and layers, but with Drupal, actually, we don't need to use them necessarily because we can translate on the server side by passing our Backbone templates through the theme layer, run T, translate the, 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 the uh, different interface elements, and then we have translated, ready to go, compiled templates on the client side with no need to translate them. So this is a really nice feature we get only through using Drupal with Backbone. Okay, my time's almost up, but uh, one more demo. Um, this is by uh, Cormac McGuire at Studio Rua, um, and it's, uh, he's Chromac, and he's, he also, he wrote another variation of a Backbone module about the same time that I did, and we've been working together on this. And let me see if I can get this one working. Apparently it just takes a second or two. There we go. So this is a, a full video editing interface built in Drupal with Backbone. Uh, you've got in-place editing, thanks to Backbone, because now we have you know, all of our data separated from our DOM, so we can do all of this. Um, I, didn't change, I didn't actually click Save there, because I didn't want to change the title of the item. We have drag and drop ordering, because any, anything that jQuery delegate can describe can be bound to model events or, or model function or model methods. So, um, you know, drag and dropping counts. Um, and, you know, here we're doing more in-place editing and save it. Um, we can add a new shot here. We'll do that in a second. Um, this is, this almost, you almost don't even realize this happened until it's, until it's, so there we just added a new shot. It's already changed. I think it's, a, it's actually an entity reference on the object that's been added on the, on the client side, saved out right away. Um, so again, seamless. You're doing some really complex, you know, that's like one of the best, you know, node, ad, node editing interfaces I've seen. Um, and it's all backbone. So wait for one second. We want to know what you thought about this session. Um, so please, if you can, take a minute, maybe right now, if you have a computer free, um, to find, to find the session on the DrupalCon Munich website um, and click the take survey link. Uh, you can also definitely message us on drupal.org or on Twitter. Um, these slides will all be live as well. Um, they'll all be on the, the Backbone module is drupal.org slash project slash Backbone. Uh, and it has links to the documentation there. Um, and there's a BOF tomorrow. Uh, I'll say one to two in the Athen room for those who are interested in contributing. There are rough edges on the module, I won't lie. Um, we, we have issues that are open that I hope to crack over the next few days. If you're interested in helping out, Please, that'd be great. Uh, thank you. I think we have a few minutes for questions, unless everyone just wants to go drink. Let's go to drink. <laughs> if you have questions, just, just go to the mic if you have questions. Hello. Hello, can people yeah. hear me? Um, I don't know if you know off the top of your head, but how, in a multi-language scenario, and you're doing all the node, you know, node title set, things like that, what is the syntax like <laughs> if you're trying to actually specify like a language so, or something like that? Yeah, if I wasn't actually glossing over what this really looks like. Um, yeah, so what this really looks like is this. Right? <laughs> So, what, so one, of, one of the tickets is to write a parsing li layer for this, so you can have this be a property on the, on the model. So right now, you just reach in there, multilingual, you do what you got to do. Um, but we want to make it a little more convenient. Uh, I wonder if you run into some performance issues or something when, uh, for instance, when your app loads, you probably do a lot of uh, requests. That means a lot of uh, Drupal bootstraps. And mm. do you feel this? I mean. At, at least what we are using is uh, required, required JS. It has optimizer that compress all your models, views, 
whatever in only one single <coughs> file. So uh, you delegate the loader thing to require.js. So okay. you don't need to worry about is loading first the, the model or the view or whatever. Okay, and what about uh, when on the same page you have a lot of collections and a lot of different models? So each of them needs to be fetched individually, I guess? So, Wh yeah. which, which means that you gather a lot of uh, Drupal bootstraps for serving those things. And do you feel this? Right. So uh, a few, I mean, I think first of all, it's a little bit early to tell. I don't think that there's been enough really hammering on it to know the, the, the performance issues there. Um, two, two things you can do. One is when, you, when, you're, when we're loading a view, that's only one call. So we're not loading each model individually, right? Um, so, so, so you have that makes it a little bit lighter. Um, and you can also um, boot, you know, th there is a, uh, a bootstrapping paradigm for Backbone where if you know you're going to be using some, 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 some items it, it, you know, on your page, you render that to JSON on request in advance, so you have it there, and then you're only making calls for um, you know, for additional, um, for you know, additional updates after that. Um, but the short is no. I mean, you saw the the to do app is making nodes and everything, and it doesn't feel slow. There's no there's no performance issues there. Yeah, but you're not not 100 people are using it simultaneously. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, you don't I, know I would yet. love someone to bang on it. Yeah, go ahead. We faced that problem too. Uh, you know when. When you start to create more models and more models, each one has one fetch, so it's easily go to dozens. So that's why I say that you need to learn JavaScript to use uh, Backbone. You can overwrite it, and it's flexible enough to create your. You can create only one single request, all the data there, and then start to trigger create model. It's called model reset, model reset, and you create all the models at once. So but it depends. Each web application is going to need something different. But you can do it. It's not <laughs> backbone. It's not going to stop you to say, no, you cannot do this. No, but maybe uh, Drupal is a little bit heavy to render all, uh, to fully bootstrap those things. So I guess if you have like a lightweight uh, framework that uh, pushes the, the JSON objects out, that makes it uh, easier on Just the server. Cash it. Yeah, of course. Uh, okay, second question is about um, the twig. Uh, you said you can use uh, the T function, right? Yes. But if it's when you render it on the in, uh, as in Drupal itself, or yes. what? Yeah. So that's that's here. If you look here, yeah. this is it's you know it's it's this it's this code here. But so that that means that you're rendering the template on the server. You're yeah. So you're rendering it twice. So you're doing, isn't, isn't but, that but, but you're not rendering it. So I'm not. We're not rendering this part on the server. So that's going to be. Uh, we're uh, actually uh, yeah. producing a Twig template through the Drupal theme layer. So we're rendering the template, uh, yeah. but not actually inter uh, interpolating all the all the variable values. Okay. Thanks. Mm, how about entity metadata wrapper? We, we, when you look at the body UND zero, it would be nice to have uh, something like uh, like the ent entity metadata wrapper in, in Backbone. Yes. <laughs> so that's that's <laughs> the goal. Yes. Yes, uh, it'd be really nice, and I welcome I welcome help, especially. Yeah, you know, I think this is probably a, a great group of people who are very familiar with working with the uh, multilingual and with with that th those constraints. So, yes. And the the metadata, y you're planning to to get them to or. <clears throat> like, I don't know, the list of fields on a node, like you said something about trying to mm, guess them, but, yeah. but we have that information, so. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you know, the way that, that I, we're trying to develop it is from the ground up a little bit. So probably the first thing is just a setting in your app, so you can choose what language, you can choose those things. Um, ultimately, it would be great to have a generator for that data, so basically pass all of that in mm. a Drupal settings array and use that to, to, to mm. extract the information. But mm. I think that's probably a few steps down the road. Yeah. Um, you know, by that time, Drupal 8 will be out, and we'll be using JSON and LD or something else, which will have full metadata included, and we don't have to worry about it. But okay. Hi. In regard to performance, I was wondering if it wouldn't make more sense if you go full-scale web app to m use something like Node.js, and you will have the possibility to get a fast uh, response that's lightweight, 
and you can reuse code, uh, JavaScript for validation and stuff like that uh, at the client side and the server side instead of using a more heavy framework like Drupal. Yeah, it has, it has a lot of sense to do this kind of thing. Uh, I think that if, if you really need very uh, high performance uh, requests, then you can use Node.js for some of them and others for, uh, for persisting the data. Maybe you want to do it directly to Drupal. So uh, you can use uh, multiple uh, back ends. Uh, you know, I, I think the other thing that I'm thinking is, you know, and I, I, I think that tools like Backbone, all these different architectures, they're making it really easy to, to build these kinds of systems. Um, and so part of my like little forecast is that people are going to start expecting this kind of interactivity, not just in web apps, but you know, that web, the line between websites and web apps is, is starting to, to blur. Mm. And so I think that, you know, there's no other CMS as well positioned to serve things that are combination, you know, like, like you can think like a really robust news, news application that has lots of standard content management features, but also maybe has something for creating your own bundles of news, news stories. Um, what's funny is Drupal is actually perfectly situated for that application. Um, whereas, you know, I, you know there, there's a few CMS projects in Node. I don't think they're, that they're as mature yet. Um, so I think that there's definitely applications for Drupal with Backbone. Have you had any experience trying to mix using both Drupal and Node.js or something similar to have a CMS for you know what all Drupal brings and have the the fast lightweight uh, REST API with something else uh, using Backbone or? Yeah, no. yeah I, I haven't, and I would caution like the idea of like a Node layer that would read a Drupal database scares me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> But it's an idea. Okay, I think we probably have time for one more. Not really, you know, maybe, you know, I, I don't know. Yet. I think actually there's going to be a presentation on Node.js uh, doing something that scared you. Um, but my question is more like, as we move towards more like one-page apps and power those by Drupal, this solves one thing that solves the reading aspect. But the longer you stay on a page, the more changes of the underlying data. And we need to think about how we pull this data in a, in a fashion that doesn't kill the server because caching is all fine and dandy, but uh, Drupal, we need to have interactivity and we can't cache everything. So we basically need to think about ways of pub subbing data and that introduces, um, that's sort of outside the scope of this module, but you are gonna quickly get into that kind of thing where you need to be able to subscribe to changes in data. Um, imagining the to-do to -do app with more than one user, you're gonna run into problems very quickly. Um, for example, sorting things. Um, um, that introduces a lot of other problems, but Backbone is the right sort of one sort of part of the solution to that. Right. But we're gonna run into other problems very quickly as well. So just one note on that is that the Drupal Node.js module, what it actually does is basically implements sockets for Drupal. And so I think that that would be a great solution would be to be able to listen to, to, to those sockets with your Backbone app. Um, it takes care of all the dispatching, it does a lot of queuing, so you only have to do it once on the, on the Drupal side. And I think that kind of answers some of the other questions too. Yeah. So if anyone wants to work on the Node.js Drupal integration for Backbone module, let me know.